screen viewers, welcome to today's enlightening entertainment. We have just watched a fascinating performance at Trail Recycled Art in the Landscape, a wearable art show held in Tainmouth, Devon, the United Kingdom. Trail is a network of volunteer professional artists and artist-led community groups who through their work express their concerns on environmental issues and climate change. Liz Lockyer is the founder and coordinator of TRAIL. Initially we started off with just landscape and, and since then it's evolved. We now have the gallery um, we, every year and we also have something called wearable art. Uh, everybody has to work with recycled materials, at least 70% in each piece. Or if the work is... Um, if the work is maybe photography, which doesn't really come under the heading of recycled, then we really ask for the work to be very, you know, very much related to environmental issues. Well, this piece is called uh, the Electricity, and it's a cityscape made up of old bits of computers, photocopiers, washing machines, VCRs, TVs. Jan O'Highway is a mosaic and ceramic artist and art teacher. Jan has used her artwork to express her concern for the planet and hope for a sustainable society. For her creation, Four Seasons, Jan used all recycled materials. With these particular pieces, they were originally um, inspired by, in, um, oh, where is it? Sirencester. There's a museum, which Siren Sester is an old Roman city, with an amazing floor, absolutely huge, great big floor of the four seasons, a Roman, you know, absolutely, with four heads of the four different, representing the four seasons in the corners. Textile artist Vinetta Cable combines traditional crafts of sewing, patchwork, quilting, embroidery, along with various recycled materials to make her creations. Inspired by the garments worn by England's Queen Elizabeth I, Vinetta created an elegant regal blue dress named Bluebell, which is actually made from discarded samples of furniture fabric books. Generally, I primarily work with textiles and I always have liked to use something that has had a previous use, especially dresses and clothes from charity shops. Can you tell us a little about your bags, please? Um, my bags are called pink, not brown paper bags. That's because they are mainly made of paper. It's various types of paper. This particular one recycles some wallpaper. This here uses magazine paper, and it's three layers of magazine paper. And this particular bag is made out of tissue paper that's been applied to fabric background. Well, they look very beautiful, but are they functional? They are fully functional. British artist Liz Lockyer transformed a barn into a huge sculpture and has been reflecting on the relationship of human activity with land and nature. Very big piece of work, um, but it really looked particularly good from the inside because when the light shone from the outside it was like being in a cathedral with all the colours of a stained glass window. Liz emphasised that Trail's development is due to the creativity and energy of all artists and groups involved. But I would say nearly every one of the artists that work here have always worked with recycled materials and so consequently, you know, this is a natural habitat for them. So we'll bring together lots of different people, you know, people that have different philosophies, different religions, different cultures. Now let's meet painter and art teacher Rachel Bennett who enjoys working with recycled cardboard to work on and usually paint without using brushes. My landscapes are not supposed to be naturalistic, they're supposed to be like a gesture um, to make you dream really. I want people to be able to be freed up by them as they are when they are on a shoreline or in a, in a field so that they can have time to contemplate. I use boxes quite a lot because they describe a liminal space very well, I think. So I carve into them 
and I uh, cut them about and I put them back together. Um, but I never ever change the shape. So uh, they are as they are. Let us now walk out of the exhibition hall to visit Vera and Peter Stride's sculptured home garden, which has changed other people's unwanted things into admirable art. Vera and Peter are self-taught artists who work with recycled clay. Using special techniques such as wood firing and smoke firing, Peter has personally designed and built kilns by reusing old bricks. Peter also made a chair out of ash and hedge cuttings, calling it the Ash Throne. Vera's work includes animals and birds, in which she shows the nuances of their expressions and attitudes. Nature and the environment have been the main themes of artist Lucy Coles. Her work reflects her feelings about the fragility of our relationship with the earth. Using an unwanted dressing table, stool, standard lamp, crushed glass, recycled concrete and reclaimed plants, Lucy created a sculpture named Concrete Jungle, which remains in the home yard's botanical gardens, serving a practical function as a habitat for butterflies. Lucy also talked about her three-dimensional work, Bird Nest Project. So I've had a character, if I call my little bird, um, and uh, this is the first three-dimensional realisation of, of my little bird. The little bird looking for something or searching for something or having to build a new home. Um, and so it's looking at recreating nature, um, giving nature a bit of a helping hand to, uh, to keep itself looking, looking good. The little bird remembers a lot of the past. It remembers how things are meant to be, and it remembers all the ancient ways of the bird. Um, and, and the little bird is torn between the two worlds because it still remembers its past, and it, it's not quite quite making sense of the future. And it's ever so worried about its little eggs. <laughs> the piece on the wall behind me, yeah. um, which I call e exterior design, is a kind of show homes, um, so that uh, future generations of little birds can can choose what their nests are can be like. So the birds are having to recreate their own idea of nesting. Yes, well there's a, there's a whole relationship that goes on between the bird and the eggs. Yeah. Um, they're the future that we've got to look after. And so the, the little bird strives to make, um, to make the world a wonderful place for the little eggs to, to live in for the future generations. Many trail artists run workshops for the public to reinforce the green concept of recycle and reuse. Many of them are also the leading force of various community groups that work on environmental issues. Jill Gratrix is running an outdoor art group in her village, which has produced various metaphorical pieces for trail projects. We have a lot of fun together. Access to Community Education, or ACE, is an organisation that provides recreational and learning activities for physically disabled adults. To address the problems that humankind has created for wildlife, they created a sculpture called A Plastic World for Birds. Sheldon Primary School in Devon is one of the children's groups that trail artists have long been working with as well. We've had an artist in residence come into the school who has um, sort of set up projects, got ideas from the children to think environmentally using recycled materials. Um, they've done things like wigwams, they've done bits of tree hanging, butterflies made out of recycled materials that are then hung in the trees in the botanical gardens, um, which the children have really, really enjoyed doing. To bring attention to the problem of plastic bags, 800 volunteers each constructed one square by knitting 4,000 plastic bags destined for landfill. The project took 1,000 hours and ended with an enormous soft sculpture named Broken Rainbow. But, um, but what was quite amazing about that project was how many people were on side and actually agreed that we had to do something about it because they were littering up um, our countryside and our seas. Environmental artist Lauren Ballard created a flock of sheep sculptures out of plastic bags. It 
it was it was through kind of just playing around with wire and things really that um, a sheep sort of materialised and then um, it kind of grabbed people's sort of imaginations I think as well just because of the, the materials and the properties of it really it's quite comedy so um, a, a flock of them quickly sort of materialised. The Bee Project aims to save the Earth's vital pollinators. The huge decline in bee populations has been caused partly due to climate change. We use Trail as a, a platform to um, promote environmental awareness and in Dawlish we focus on a particular issue which was, which was saving the bees. Okay, so I've made these bumblebees, but I've focused on the individual species that are, are threatened. We were really trying to encourage people to think about what they could do for themselves as well. A major part of that was the, the flowers that they could plant that um, bees are attracted to, so the nectar-rich types of flowers. A lot of them are kind of wild flowers and also fruit flowers and herbs as well. Artist Jill Gratrix has created a series of artworks from foil tops she has collected from bottles. Talking about fruit juices, we have a fruit salad, we have strawberry, we have all sorts of flavours of, 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 of fruit juice. Vegetarian artist Maddie Norris's work has recurring images of circular, spiral and labyrinthine themes which she uses to refer to the ancient wisdom and spiritual knowledge of indigenous tribes and their traditions of respecting nature, animals and Mother Earth. The spiral incorporating everybody and sharing, not trying to take or be selfish or exploit. I just would like, and everybody else I hope, would like to be able to save Mother Earth and everything upon it. Maddie has made a transparent sculpture called Glimsheems from plastic drink bottles. This Lockyer sculpture is made out of old car hoods. She named it, I've stopped the world but I don't want to get off. So the, the way the piece of work comes together is, you know, it's, it's, not as, it's not quite as the world as we know it, but it was also the um, ice caps were melting down through and, and the uh, continents were being um, distorted. If we actually continue to be very selfish about the things that we do, of course we will actually, you know, in the, finally we will be left on our own and really what we do need to do is, is work together. The climate change, um, I think it is all going to happen. I think it's going to happen much faster than we think. So I think we should actually be looking at working together on such issues as climate change. It's one of the big issues that I think could actually unite countries. We see the effects of it now in countries where they you know, rely heavily on their, the land and farming. Um, you know, these people are the ones that are going to be affected most by it. I think it's, it's part of our obligation, really, and responsibility to, to help them. I don't think we're going to afford the land um, that can support cows um, sold as, as beef anymore. Um, but I think we're all going to have to be vegetarian. We can't wait for somebody else to come along and sort it out for us. We each have to make our little contribution. Our delight and appreciation all caring trail artists for your unique, creative, eco-conscious projects May your artworks continue to renew our thinking about our precious planetary home and ways to protect it in our daily lives. For more information about trail recycled art in landscape, please visit www.trail.org.uk. Thank you, resourceful viewers, for being with us today. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for words of wisdom after noteworthy news. May our bold efforts help to save the world and shape a beautiful future.
For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ee.